Reply. Erwin's reply is death. Death to you all. Nobody puts Erwin in a in a jail cell. <laughs> Something's going on. Yeah, the civilians, they can feel it. Oh my god. He said that so casually. He's like, yeah, they're having a meeting and everyone will die right here. They look scared of him. They are scared of he makes a great case, and this is sort of an obvious point, right? But I think this council must have accounted for that. So they're weighing the pros and cons and have decided that Erwin is a greater threat. I feel like where this counts the most is with the civilians who do hold this point of view, who don't know who the real enemies are, so to speak. Feels like that's, that's about to happen now. It's a real possibility. Pixis is on the inside. That's my guess, yeah. They're, they've thought all this through. <laughs> Their faces just give it away immediately. <coughs> Nervous cough. The irony of that is that that's so far from what Erwin does. It's a huge stretch. Come on, let's be real. <laughs> this guy, this guy's paying attention. This part is truthful. I mean, he really believes this. And he doesn't want humans fighting humans. Yeah, he has people rooting for him, but they can't openly show his show their support. This whole discussion and like talking about details is so pointless because they had reached their conclusion a long time ago. It's not really based on rational threat of, of the Titans or Erwin doing whatever they're accusing him of. The issue that's been clearly set up previously, but you know, especially by this season, is that they rely very heavily on just control and seeing the population and, you know, important elements as just puppets on a string. And Erwin is a major obstacle deliberately. I mean, that's that's what we found out about him recently is that this is very intentional by him because of that very thing. Like, he was aware of that from a very young age. And so, Erwin is probably counting on all this. That's my feeling. They're 100% going to sentence him to death. There's no question. This is a sham trial. It's not even a trial. What happened to the judge guy? The legal system in this country is just, it's something else. It's bizarre. I guess it makes sense it would just be a sham legal system. But remember when Aaron had a trial? Anyway, Erwin is probably counting on the death sentence. Which makes me curious. What's he got up his sleeve? Here it comes. Here comes the death sentence. No need for suspense. We already know. Yeah, big surprise. They're literally already setting up the, the thing to hang him. I feel like it might be, actually. Well, how's it gonna go down? Look at him, look at his face. This is the happiest I've ever seen him. Hmm. Uh-oh. Really? Wait, really? Or is this just information they're leaking? That's not, not correct. Reiner and Bertholdt wouldn't come back yet, would they? And Pixis is in on it. I feel like the tide is gonna shift. I mean, the people are already aware of this thinking, right? They've been aware of this the whole time. And you can only push so far. There's no way the government survives, no matter how powerful they are, if the entire populace turns against them. And everyone in the scouts, Hanji especially, are doing such a great job reversing the sentiment. Found the power, the vessel takes it. Yeah. Okay, so that's sort of what I thought. They're ready to go with whatever this plan is. <laughs> Erwin's always planting seeds. Yeah, that makes sense. Erwin was just trying to get them to expose their their sentiments. 
駐屯兵団と調査兵団は同調していないと申し上げましたが一言言い忘れましたわいあなた方にも同調していないと<笑> I like that. That's good. もしあなた方がより多くの人類を救えるのであればエルヴィンを処刑台に送っても良いと思っておった I believe him. 民衆は王に貸し付くのみだぞ地方の貴族も黙っておるまい I don't think you realize the position he's in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this has been brewing for a long time. Early in season one, there's that scene where Pixis is visiting someone in the upper echelon or whatever, and the guy's complaining about his wine or cheese. I can't remember. Some, some extravagant thing. Meanwhile, Pixis is aware of the fact that his men are dying constantly at the front lines. That was always going to be a thing that happened just because in order for the garrison and the scouts to do their job, it forces them to be super honed and refined people who are willing to give up their lives. In those roles, they either are wiped out or they become extremely resilient and focused. It's like pressure creating diamonds, right? Like diamonds of character. They're willing to give their lives for the sake of humanity. Meanwhile, these people are so disconnected from reality or for actual concern or for anything resembling something other than just selfish interests that when the two meet, there's going to be major conflict or contrast. There's no way this was sustainable. There's no way this would last. That being said, while it feels like a good thing in the show, just because, you know, I like Erwin and I like Pixis, there are some dangers to the coup as well, right? This is going to destabilize things. And they also know things. The inner people know things that maybe the other people don't know. So it'll be interesting to see if that's a factor at all. Coups are risky as well. Coups are difficult. You never know. But I, I have faith in Erwin. Yeah, speaking of cultural differences. Choose carefully. The king still looks bored, though. <laughs> As if it mattered what the rules were. That's why. He's a nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, Erwin doesn't really do happy. At least he acknowledges that. That gives me some hope. Meanwhile, they're closing in on the scouts still. Oh, it was it was Hanji. That's cool. Everyone did their did their part. Everyone played a role. That was a really fast. Switch. Interesting. No, don't. I want to enjoy this, but <laughs> the show has conditioned me not to enjoy things that are good. <laughs> I feel like this is a false, false hope. Alright, I'll allow myself to enjoy it a little bit. Very swiftly, too. Underground chapel. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I was about to say that's that's a nice touch. Giving the announcement from a place he was supposed to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, well, they definitely gave him purpose, right? At least he's honest. Yeah, it definitely gives him purpose, right? At least he's honest. Yeah, well, they definitely gave him purpose, right? At least he's honest. Yeah, well, they definitely it's a cool scene. Erwin has a way of constantly convincing me or reassuring me of how fit he is to be in his position. Just the fact that he's wondering if it's possible he's making a big mistake. That consideration is a big part of what sets him apart, I think. Especially in a world or in a show where there's so much black and white, where it's so much, my enemies die, you know? Which is something that is reflected even by the viewership, it feels, to a large extent. And partly what I think the show is commenting on and why it's told backwards in this way. I think part of being a good leader or just part of being, a, you know, a good person trying to act in the world is understanding that there are always risks of any big decision 
decision. There's a humility that I think is often lacking, but really important. It's way easier and also really seductive to think in absolutes, right? Kill my enemies. I'm smart and others are dumb and that gives me right to rule. But I think real intelligence, it's not attached to those categories and it also is reflective and adaptive. It's like the story of Socrates and the Oracle, right? Like she said, he's the smartest person because he's the only one who realizes he knows nothing. I think it's especially true for me in a show like this where all we have are virtues. We don't have information, right? So we don't know the consequences. We can't. So you have to just root your decisions in principles and you just trust that that works out. And I think that's even more true of life, even though that's difficult to swallow. In this conversation, there's this big question about selfishness, right? Like, is Erwin really doing things for the good of humanity or is he just thinking about himself and his own life? And the answer, I think, is both. And that's good. You know, that's okay. Like, I think there is a beauty in that kind of selfishness as long as it's selfish towards the right thing personally. I think that Erwin, as a kid, through tragedy to some extent, was able to gain some huge insight on the world he lived in and to sort of disavow that, that kind of action and to try to live purely for himself. And obviously that gives him tremendous benefits. That gave him purpose and meaning in life, right? And I think that connection, that connection to life, that striving for an ideal or some form of ultimate self-realization is the ultimate selfishness, but also does the ultimate good. And the more I think about it, the more I think that's the only thing there is to strive for. So for me, Erwin is there. He's solidly there. It just so happens that Reflection, self-reflection and caution is a symptom of that. It's a symptom of that state. The chapel. Is that the mid-card chapel? That left Historia as the only heir, I guess. The last heir. Right. That's my, my thinking as well. It's an ancient ritual or something. They covered it up. It, it's connected to the Titans. <gasps> oh no, were there actually even bandits? It's okay, jumping to conclusions is a natural thing in this show. It's a world of secrets and lies, constantly, especially secrets. Did, did Aaron just... what? Huh? <laughs> what was that vision? Is this the chapel basement? Some kind of ceremony they're preparing for, maybe? By Historia? Ooh, that's a good question, Armin. <laughs> Armin's always thinking. So I'm guessing you combine some kind of blood blood related powers of Historia's family plus Eren's abilities. Historia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was always gonna be her. It does seem like it's some lineage of godlike beings. Although I don't know what Historia's power is or what it will be. But it does seem like Whatever she can do, whatever she has, combined with Eren's ability to control titans, will enable them to destroy the world, whatever that means. Or end humanity, I think is what they what they said. Although I'm sure ending humanity is not as simple as just humans gone, or everything human-related gone. I'm still thinking about this idea of, like, a cycle. Something cyclical. Death and rebirth, that kind of thing. One thing that I'm confused about right now is that race does not seem to be really aligned with the, the central government, but the central government seemed to think that they had it all figured out, that they were ready to go. In fact, I think that was their biggest mistake is getting a little bit ahead of themselves and overplaying their hand with the scouts. Maybe if they had allowed the status quo to be maintained a little bit longer, they would have been able to realize whatever it was they were doing. Also, they're not out of the picture yet just because there's Kenny and his whole whole crew. That's still going to be a huge threat. We haven't seen him for a couple episodes, but he's out there lurking and he's working on something. And he may even end up being autonomous. It'll be cool to see where he falls, actually. I have no idea. Even though it seems like the inner government and the puppet king were taken down, we didn't really get a clear view of their, their goal, their motive, I think. It's crazy that the... Aaron sacrifice is happening so early that this feels like a late game thing you know like end of <laughs> end of show thing but the fact that it's happening now is exciting because there's a lot that could happen it means anything goes from this point on we, we may totally like have the rug pulled out from us again this shows like a layer of rugs it's like you're standing on solid ground and then that gets pulled out from under you and then you fall and you you know you, you break your legs 
but you manage to get up again and then you get another another pull. It feels like there's another big one coming. But that aside, I think the standout for me in this episode is Erwin. The fact that he's constantly trying to align himself with, with what is best. For me, he has a higher calling. He has a very clear and what I feel is mostly pure guiding star. And then he keeps himself in check. You know, he keeps himself in line towards that goal constantly, no matter what the cost. And for me, that's a really good metaphor for life and something that I find really inspiring. Because I think a big question is what are, what are you anchored to? What is that thing that pulls you forward? And I think that for a lot of people, they might not have anything to pull them forward at all in the first place. A lot of life seems to just be reacting, reactions, following convenience or things that are just placed in front of you that, that you know seem like a path. It's difficult to get off that that track. It takes a lot of conscious deliberation to realize that you're even on that track at all. And then being on that path, constantly keeping yourself in check, staying humble, eliminating things that are superfluous to your being, having enough humility to see clearly, seeing yourself as a part of the world and being honest about what the world is and what the universe is and not thinking that you're the center of it, if that makes sense. Not thinking that you alone dictate the realities of the world and therefore are in mastery of morality. There's a lot to it. The coup just generally, you know, is something to be nervous about, but the fact that Erwin is aware of that expresses the danger doesn't mean there isn't danger it doesn't mean that the problem is solved but i would be more concerned if it wasn't the case if he's like i am erwin smith the the master of the kingdom you know that would be a little bit like okay well we haven't really improved at all so lots of interesting ways this can go so i guess i'll see you next time when historia eats Aaron.